Today, I'm going to introduce the sensor database extractor to you. I'm going to explain how to install the software and how to use it. To run the sensor database extractor, you first need to download D2RQ. D2RQ is a service to access relational databases and extract information and populating it into RDF graphs. So just head to the website and download the zip containing all D2RQ files. Once you have downloaded the files, you will get a folder that looks like this. The first step is done now. So the second step is to download the driver that is specific for the database you are using. As an example, let's imagine that we have an Oracle 12G database. And let's look for the driver so you see Oracle drivers and we just go there and download the newest one. Here you can see the old JDBC 7 jar file and such a jar file is the driver we are looking for. So just download the file and insert it into the folder lib and database drivers. Now you can see here is the database driver that I added. Okay, so now the second step is done. What's now left before we can run the database extractor is the creation of a mapping file. The mapping files contains information from the d sensor or from the ontology we want to populate data into. In our case, this is a sensor domain specific ontology. And you also have to specify connection details for the database. So we have a mapping to a database T2RQ concept, and we have to specify the driver name for your database. This is usually provided when you download the database driver. You have to specify a host and a port to the database. So host and a port after the sign and also the username and password. I just took it out here so that it's anonymized, but you have to specify the credentials, the information for your database. You also have to provide a base UI for the concepts that are created. This is also the URL to the graphical interface where you can browse through your RDF graph using D2RQ. Just for ease of use, I use, I'm going to use uh, the local host in this example. Okay, so after all the information is given, also the mapping from a specific table to a concept from an ontology, we can start and run the service. So we just head to our terminal and go to the d2rq file folder using the cd command and then we run the d2r server and we have to choose our mapping file in this case we call it jesh by jesh to sensor dso and then we start the mapping file so we just have to wait until the service is initialized and then we can browse through the RDF graph. This might take some, tech, uh, some seconds depending on how complex your mapping file is, how much information is gathered from the database and how much concepts are to be populated. So now we can see the service started at the given URL, so let's just go there and check out our RDF graph. Like I mentioned, this is an RDF graph containing sensor information. We have a database containing all of the measurements and meter information from sensors, like their location. And what we now want to do is to have a look at some concepts. For example, let's have a look at the sensor. You can see we have a lot of sensors from this database. Each sensor has some properties like acquisition rate per year, identifiers, also the locations of the dam it belongs to, and a lot of readings containing the measurements. Reading itself belongs to a campaign in which it was, ga was gathered, a date, an acquisition date, 
an identifier and several readings. So you can see we have a lot of concepts, a lot of relations between data and everything was put together just by specifying this mappi mapping file. And now we have a structured version of the data from the database. Another benefit from the D2RQ server is that we have a Sparkle endpoint we can query with Sparkle queries. So we might extract an RDF subgraph just containing sensors from a specific water dam. We can either query this Sparkle endpoint directly using a service like Fuseki from Jenna, or we can use the Ajax-based Sparkle Explorer. Just note that this explorer is called Snorkel, but the name of the endpoint is Sparkle. So now we can just define a query to extract a subgraph. For example, we can use the construct query to create another subgraph containing sensors from a specific dam. And here you can see it, we have an RDF file containing sensor with ID 32555 containing lots of readings, acquisition rate, identifier, and of course also a location. And you see it's the same dam that we specified above. And of course there are more than just one sensor in this RDF subgraph. So this is what you can do using the sensor database extractor. You might now continue working on your subgraph or get other subgraphs. You can do whatever you want. And the good thing is that you can have a structured version of the information from the database just by specifying mappings. I hope this is useful for you and you enjoy working with it.